Hello, hello, this is Fear Dragon, and welcome to Breaking Out, the show about North American StarCraft 2 players. Here on this show, we take a look at an up-and-coming North American talent. Each week, we check out a new player to get a feel for their personality and their playstyle. On Thursday, we interview the player to find out more about who they are and why you should care about them. On Friday, we watch three of their games as we cover their playstyle in each of the three matchups. Saturday, we take a look at an awesome game they played and relax with a little bit of fun as we recap the week and get an analysis of the games. Breaking Out will cover 8 players before it culminates into the Breakout Invitational. With a minimum prize pool of $1,000, we find out who is the most likely player to break out of the North American scene. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Hope you guys enjoy the show! Hey guys, uh, my name's Jason. I'm Jason Jackson. I am a 23-year-old human being. Uh, I play Zerg in StarCraft 2, and so far I'm uh, finishing my degree as a computer science student. I'm in the last year of college at Eastern Washington University, and uh, just finishing up my degree. Going to be uh, hopefully moving out to Seattle, uh, getting a job out there, but for the time being, still stuck at school, uh, waiting tables at a local restaurant as well, downtime, and uh, just making it by and playing StarCraft in my uh, spare time. Um, most interesting fact about me, I guess, uh, I've been a gamer like all my life, that's pretty common I guess, but uh, so much so that I actually ended up uh, meeting my girlfriend through one of the games that we played. We played World of Warcraft and all the, the fun stuff that goes through that, but she took a chance on me and uh, here we are five and a half years later just enjoying life and uh, supporting each other, getting getting through all the, the fun stuff, the good times and the bads, but uh, enough about Jason. Um, my name is Krios in StarCraft. I'm a, a Zerg player. I'd, I'd say that I lean towards an aggressive macro style of play, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm very unknown to do any type of like all-ins. Uh, I generally don't do very risky plays, but I do like to be aggressive with whatever I do. I don't like to sit back behind spores, uh, spines, build up a bunch of swarm house or brood lords or any of that uh, unfun stuff. I like to generally hit timings, kind of pull my opponent apart uh, as much as I can, uh, as you'll definitely see in the replay that I sent against Motok. Um, I just, I generally just enjoy it. I think it gives me more chances to win the game. It pulls a uh, harder weight on my opponent to play correctly and it's just fun. Uh, I don't find it fun to play the tower defense styles that we're seeing uh, traditional zergs play where you just send out wave after wave of units and they, they run straight into siege tanks and die for 40 minutes until someone screws up. That, that just bores me a bit. But uh, why do I deserve the chance to be the next breakout player? I, I think that I've been steadily improving ever since uh, Hots, basically. I, I was always like a, a mid-low master player in Wings of Liberty, never really spent a whole lot of time in the game. Um, never really had like the mindset for it, but ever since Hots I've been enjoying the game a lot more. And i uh, just been constantly improving as much as I can. Uh, I end up fixing holes in my game. I am always looking for ways to better, you know, go through like the minute details of how I should have attacked better and uh, mapping out uh, different openers and all that kind of stuff. I think that I am a very good analytical player uh, in the style that I choose. I think I play pretty darn well. Uh, not very many Zergs these days try to constantly be in the face of Protoss or, or Mecking Terrans or anything like that. Uh, I think I do a pretty good job. It, it, uh, it's an interesting playstyle, I think, and people who watch me play it uh, generally enjoy the games. I don't, I don't usually go for games that people will find boring, and uh, I think that a lot of people could learn from uh, that type of playstyle. It's, it's fun to be aggressive, and it's fun to watch people being aggressive. That's the point of RTS, right? But uh, what does StarCraft mean to me? I'm, I'm going into the computer science field. Uh, I think a lot about game design and I think RTS's in general have a lot of beauty to the game um, as far as all the different subtle mechanics that you don't really think about but uh, play huge roles you know map design uh, game mechanics uh, what are we thinking of 
Yeah, like the, the map design, the game mechanics, just like Defender's Advantage, uh, stuff like that that just accidentally happen because of the way the game's made up, but become a huge strategical part of the game. I think StarCraft 1 was one of the most beautifully designed games of all time, and StarCraft 2 shares uh, a lot with it. Uh, the whole competitive aspect of it is fantastic. I don't think there's any game out there that truly uh, encaptures the intense uh, competitive nature that one person has towards the other. You don't see, you know, the devastation of a loss in a, you know, a MOBA team when they lose. Obviously they're disappointed, but you never see, like, Marine King burying his hands in it. Uh, there's a lot more at stake, because you know that everything rides on yourself and yourself alone. Just you against the other person, there's, you know, there's not much luck to be had, there's not, you know, random factor, there's just you against the opponent. And that's always been something that's just, it's a its a beautiful game, and uh, hopefully, you know, with the career path that I'm choosing, one one day I'll be able to have an RTS of my own, but for the time being, I'm enjoying playing a, being a player, and hope to continue that. So, that's my application, thank you very much, and I hope you uh, consider me for breaking out Season 2. Thanks. Hello, hello, welcome to Breaking Out, the show about North American StarCraft 2 players that you need to know about. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a player whose passion for gaming extends beyond just playing. Representing Team Gravity, we have the 23-year-old American Zerg player. Please give a warm welcome to Jason Kraos Jackson. How are you doing today, man? Doing pretty good. How are you today? I am not too bad because uh, I can sit here and talk with you and... I gotta say, man, you you actually had like a really really sick application video because I I felt like I could actually just feel your passion for StarCraft and gaming and all that stuff through your application video, which is which is actually really awesome because I feel it, man. I feel it. I'm looking forward to this. Right on. Me too. <laughs> right. Me too. Thanks for having me. It is absolutely great to have you. But really quickly, for anyone tuning in for the first time, Breaking Out, as you just saw in that little intro, is a show about North American StarCraft two players that you need to know about. Today on the show, we're covering the interview with Kratos over here. We're going to learn a little bit more about his history, his current situation, his future asp or aspirations in gaming and StarCraft 2, and just really just get a better feel for his emotional side, maybe. Maybe we'll get him to cry a little bit. I don't think it's ever <laughs> happened. Probably won't ever happen. Um, but, you know, a man can dream. But then tomorrow, we're actually going to be doing a little bit of game coverage for Kratos' games. We get to f actually see what his playstyle is like, so it's not just him talking about it all the time. And then on Saturday, we're going to do the, uh, the Awesome Day episode, which is going to be an awesome game, followed up by a little bit of arcade fun, followed up by analysis with Kratos. So Kratos is actually going to give us very detailed analysis about his thoughts on the game, so we get to actually jump into the mind of the player and learn a little bit. That's always one of my favorite days because I just learn so much on those days. But for now, again, we're doing the interview day today. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And Kratos, I have got to ask, first of all, real talk, all right? Real Your talk. name is Kratos, all, right. all right? Yeah, yeah. Every single time I cast you, I eventually end up accidentally calling you Kratos. Does that annoy you? <laughs> no, not really. Uh, right. I, I get asked all the time if that's where the name come from, and it's it's not, but <laughs> uh, it it's from? close close enough. The name I don't remember. It was I was playing World of Warcraft, and uh, spoilers. Oh God, we're getting real talk already. But uh, <laughs> so I was playing World of Warcraft, and we were like a friend of mine wanted to name each other pretty close to the same thing, so it had to have a letter, you know, a C or a K that sounded the same. And we were going through like random uh, Greek mythology etymology type crap. Mm -hmm. And uh, Krios was like, I think Krios or something close to it was supposed to be for Supreme. And we we're like, oh, it's badass at like 15 <laughs> years old. So that's where it stuck. And it's just used it ever since, basically. That is badass. And I, I can definitely feel like that Greek mythology kind of feel from yeah, the name. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's actually a really cool story for it. Um, <laughs> I'm just curious, like, is it like one of your close friends from like real life or... Yeah, it was a friend of mine from high school. Uh, we were playing. He got me into World of Warcraft. God damn him! But uh, <laughs> oh, I know the feeling. <laughs> there we go. But uh, we got out of that pit, so here we are now. But yeah, uh, real life friend. Just kind of stuck with it. Yeah, cool. So really quickly, jumping back 
possibly a little bit further back. It might actually be a little bit forward. Uh, I'm kind of iffy on the timeline for when Blizzard game is released, but you actually did mention in your application video, you felt like Brood War from StarCraft 1 was one of the most beautifully designed games. So did you actually play a lot of Brood War then? I played it uh, more so around when it was released. Uh, not like super competitively or anything. I wasn't uh, playing on iCup or anything, but uh, looking back on it, basically I started playing it again uh, my first year of college and uh, again super casually not really anything to it it was more just like a, hey Starcraft 2 is coming out let's play Brood War again because uh, it was a, a good a, a good experience back then and yeah I, I think it's one of the more beautifully designed games uh, I've ever played obviously there's a lot of uh, unnecessary mechanical difficulty in it I I don't think that that's like that's where a lot of people mention the beauty of the game was how difficult it is to play but uh, I just think the actual the game design concepts of it the the expansion setups and all that was it was really really well done and it's impressive for a game that's that old to still be such a good shiny example of uh, game design because current current day you see a lot of game companies focusing more on like creating a great story and creating, uh, you know, really awesome visuals and stuff like that. But I think the actual game design gets thrown to the wayside a lot lately. It's a shame. Mm -hmm. And that actually does lead me into uh, my next question. So, I mean, it's, it's jumping actually a little bit ahead, but you really do seem to take a profound interest in game design. And you're also pursuing a degree in computer science. You're in your senior year at, I believe... Um, Eastern was Washington. Eastern Washington University, yes. Uh, were you interested in going into game development then? Uh, it was kind of like a natural progression. I wasn't like, uh, going from high school, obviously I was playing like a lot of World of Warcraft and just games. I've played all the way back to like EverQuest and uh, mm -hmm. what was that, like 99. And so I've, I've been sticking with games for forever basically. And uh Coming out of high school, I wanted to do maybe something with physics, probably something with computers. I wasn't sure, so I was planning on doing like a major in comp sci and minor in physics, and uh, just kind of stuck with comp sci more than physics, uh, just out of preference, basically. And physics has a lot of courses you I don't really want to get into, to be <laughs> honest. It's a lot of work yeah. for the minor, so uh, stuck with comp science. I like it a lot. It's uh, I enjoy it. it's it's anybody who likes puzzles and problem solving and stuff like that I think gets a lot of enjoyment out of programming but that could just be me talking out my ass so <laughs> might be that too well hey man I feel you on a lot of that myself and my computer science major and uh, you know just kind of really jumping back into I guess the influence that gaming has had on your life I mean one of the things that you mentioned in your application video was actually that you know, you had been playing World of Warcraft, as you had just recently said, and you actually met your girlfriend of five and a half years in World of Warcraft. So, yeah. I mean, there, there's a story there. You got to tell yeah. it. Now. You got to tell right. it. All right, all right, all right. Cats out of the bag. Here's the crying already. I thought we were going to at least get, like, halfway through this first. <laughs> uh, all right, so, uh, yeah, I was raid leading, uh, playing a lot of PvP Arena, but also raid leading and... Uh, ended up just talking to my now current girlfriend she was asking for help on various stuff and we just started hanging out for a while um, she kind of was put into a spot where uh, she had to move and we just figured hey uh, she came out and visited a few times we had a pretty good time nothing uh, concrete or anything and then yeah she was put in a spot to move so I was like hey why don't you why don't you come out here and we hit it off ever since and here we still are five Five and a half years later, so not a wow. not a huge like dramatic story or anything. It wasn't like a love at first sight, dreary, you know, any of that kind of stuff. But we we uh, yeah we hung out quite a lot, spent God knows how many hours uh, in game, and then yeah she moved out here, so made it official. That's really crazy. Uh, how many years was it until I guess she ended up moving out there? Uh, uh about a year and a half probably. Okay. So yeah, there was a lot of like long distance uh, stuff going on with that, and that's never any fun. But yeah, it got past the hard part. So yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, we are having a little bit of issues with Skype. It looks like it, the video is actually just cutting out. So guys, don't go anywhere. I'm gonna well, it's gonna be like a matter of seconds with the magic of editing. 
But we'll be right back. I'm just going to make sure that the cameras don't mess themselves up again. Hey guys, sorry about that. We were actually just uh, talking a little bit about uh, Kratos' experience with World of Warcraft and how he um, actually met his girlfriend of five and a half years on World of Warcraft. Kind of, you, you touched a little bit on how exactly you guys met and everything. I'm actually really curious though. Did you actually catch the, uh, the hot bid interview with Kolaris at all? Uh, when? Uh, it, act, it came out like a couple of days ago. Um, no, I haven't seen Kla it yet. Kolaris actually, it's so funny because Kolaris also <laughs> mentioned like, oh yeah, I, I, like his ex-girlfriend he had met on World of Warcraft and everything. So okay. I had, to, I had to ask like how you guys met because apparently he met like over having a rare mount or something. <laughs> I don't know the full oh, story. Geez. But, uh, no, no, no specific instance. <laughs> well, it's, it sounds like it's good that you guys didn't meet over a rare amount, because you guys are still together then, right? Yeah, that must have been the deal breaker. I, probably probably fought over it. I wonder how the divorce went. <laughs> they get, like, the head of the mount, or who gets the rear end? I don't even know. Oh, that's a really good question. I mean, it's really... That'd be a really awkward uh, issue to bring up with, like, Blizzard it tech would. support. And then you get Peta in there as well, who kills the horse. So. <laughs> it's course. ugly. It's ugly. It really does get ugly. But I mean, you guys are still together, and uh, is she really uh, supportive, or like, does she get involved with you with your gaming and I guess your involvement yeah. in esports at all? Uh, yeah, she she definitely pushes me a lot to actually keep um, motivated and just I don't know. She she finds the whole scene pretty interesting. Uh, she doesn't play StarCraft herself. It's obviously pretty intimidating for uh, a lot of people. Just like the barrier to entry to actually enjoy star starting to play StarCraft is is really high compared to most games. But uh, yeah, she plays quite a few games herself. Obviously, if that's where we met. And uh, yeah, she's been she's been super supportive throughout this whole thing and really trying to keep me uh, uh, my attention split correctly between school and uh, work and StarCraft, all that good stuff. So. Yeah, she's been a huge help. Yeah, cool. And what about your family? Do Are they aware of your involvement in esports at all? Uh, my mom definitely is. My dad is to some degree. Uh, he knows that, like, I have I traveled over to Seattle a couple, I don't know, probably like seven months ago or so mm -hmm. uh, to play in a tournament there. So he knows that I actively am um, good. He knows that I'm ranked pretty high uh, nationally, but... Outside of that, he doesn't know uh, that I'm even doing this show or anything like that. So he's not hugely following it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But your mom is. Oh yeah, she's she's eagerly waiting to see what the hell's going on here. So <laughs> she'll be seeing all the deep dark secrets as well. Awesome. I'll try and get the the juiciest details out for her. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's do she'll that. Hang it over your head all day. <laughs> Um, but yeah, actually, kind of moving on to a little bit of StarCraft-related stuff. So, I mean, you mentioned also in your application video that you were actually mid to low masters like the during Wings of Liberty, but Heart of the Swarm really kind of inspired you to start playing a little bit better. You uh, were having more fun with the game. What happened uh, during the Heart of the Swarm launch that changed things so much? Uh, Zerg was allowed to attack. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, uh, that's a blunt way to put it, but yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I but, but seriously... Uh, I, I never really liked the whole Broodlord Infester uh, metagame. It was really kind of a nightmare to, to play, to watch, to play against, I'm sure, for the other races. It, it wasn't very fun. Um, I was always trying, and I was always trying to like do offbeat things like Zerg vs. Protoss. I'd do like Muto with 1-1 one, one Ling drops and crap like that and just get slaughtered if he played well and went easily if he didn't. Um, I guess like for for the parts of Wings of Liberty, I would get to like start to face grandmasters, so I'd be fairly high in masters. But uh, every time I got high, then it was uh, it just turned into okay. Well, you need to start going Broodlord and Fester. And after a month of doing that, I'd get bored and start playing Dota or Path of Exile or whatever that could <laughs> yeah. split my attention away from how how terrible that that gameplay is. So. Oh. That was probably the most of it. Uh, Hots, obviously, it's starting to switch that uh, sort of that way again, especially in regards to like uh, Zergris Protoss. But mm -hmm. uh, Zergris Terra now is super uh, fun. I think it's obviously the the most inner engaging uh, matchup right now for spectators mm -hmm. and especially players. It's 
really really good every you know it's got comeback potential it's got yeah. uh, great mechanics from both sides it's fast it's you know it's just a great matchup and I feel like uh, Cerebrus Protoss is kind of going back to the way it was but that's the nature of Protoss I guess <laughs> well I am looking forward to hearing more of your thoughts on that a little bit later on oh, we yeah. start getting into the balance and everything um but I guess let's kind of jump back to something that you mentioned earlier, and that was how you you know you went out and visited Seattle and everything uh, with your dad. You also mentioned in your interview that you are hoping that once you graduate that you'll be able to move out to Seattle. I mean, is there something specific about Seattle that you want to go back to, or go to? I should say. Uh, if you've been in this neck of the woods, uh, Seattle is like the only thing in the top left twenty five percent of the country that does anything techy. So uh, if if you want to go somewhere with computer science and not move to California, uh, you're going to Seattle. It's just kind of like a given. But outside of that, I I like the culture of Seattle quite a lot. It's kind of it's a it's a bigger city without like the super big city feel yet. Um, it's starting to get towards that way, but it it's definitely a whole different feeling when you go to Seattle versus uh, Southern California city. You know, yeah. San. I haven't gone to Los Angeles, God help me if I ever do, but like uh, compared to like San Francisco or San Diego or mm -hmm. anything like that. Um, my girlfriend was also from Colorado, so it's a good chance that we'll go to Denver as well. Uh, I, I like that whole area quite a lot. It's uh, really nice out there actually. And that's it's the same sort of feeling in uh, Denver as Seattle. It's a bigger city, it's pretty developed tech-wise and uh, doesn't have the the assholes you get from the east coast and <laughs> california <laughs> oh man that hurts my heart Shot, right shots here. fired <laughs> i'm sorry i'm a californian so oh yeah. uh, california and oh, born, born on the east coast so you just insulted me oh, in geez. multiple ways multiple there angles go. there you go all right <laughs> but i you know you again uh you mentioned that you kind of want to go into game development or some sort you're very interested in game design at least i would were you thinking like Valve if you can move out to Seattle or something or kind of like more small startup sort of stuff? Uh, what were you kind of thinking about when you're going to move out? Uh, Valve is, I probably have more respect for Valve than any other. Uh, I guess they're more of a publisher now than a developer, but, uh, yeah. but at the same time, I, I'll probably take some time off after school. Uh, mm -hmm. Depending on how StarCraft goes, probably not we'll see it depends on how if all of a sudden I'm like winning everything in North America then <laughs> all right if you force me but uh well if you you're know, gonna give me money if, I guess if you, if you insist but uh also if I wouldn't mind just uh, developing something of my own I uh, make the analogy a lot where you know working at like a company like Valve uh, or any of the other big publishers or developers you're you're basically like a welder on on a giant skyscraper right you're one part of something uh, that's pretty huge and when you're finished you can't look at the whole building and be like yeah I built that whole building it's like yeah. no I, I welded pieces of it together and uh, it'd be pretty cool to be able to you know build your own building if you will and, and make your own your own product afterwards so that's something I'm super interested in uh, so a smaller scale uh, development would be awesome something independent would be awesome but you got to make money too, and it's pretty hard to do that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, now, I did also want to ask uh, more on the side of StarCraft. What do you feel like has been your biggest achievement in StarCraft Two up until this point? Uh, not a whole lot. <laughs> um, so, so uh, I guess pretty in modest the answer. <laughs> yeah. So, realistically, not a whole lot, but. Uh, it, since joining Gravity, we've been playing in a lot of team leagues, and overall, uh, I've gotten quite a few all kills uh, throughout that. We've won a couple uh, individual leagues for you know five hundred dollars, or not individual, but team leagues for like five hundred dollars here and there. Oh, here you go, uh, five hundred dollars here and there. But uh, recently, uh, in the DETL, I all killed Seed. That felt pretty great that day. Especially because yeah. the Seahawks went on to win the Super Bowl the same day, so that was oh, a yeah. fantastic day. And then uh, outside of that, just like last weekend, uh, get, taking three games off of complexity, we still lost, unfortunately, but uh, it felt pretty good, almost all killing complexity as well. So 
I'd say those two are the the best performances I've had so far. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it's it's hard to say that I've done a great deal when you know I haven't qualified for. I was one round off of qualifying for WCS and yeah, uh, nothing else really in individual leagues. Granted, I haven't played in a whole heck of a lot of them. Yeah, that's fair. And I mean, I want to just like talk you up a little bit, like that, especially even just like the DETL uh, series against Complexity. I mean, you were beating very well-known players like QXC been around since like the beta like a total badass when it comes to Karen and literally like it was on a completely weird map that QXC's constantly been counterpicking in that league and he literally had a 100% win rate against Zerg <laughs> in that league and you're like you just came in there and beat him I was like oh no yeah. big deal whatever well, next, <laughs> next player and then you also beat Hendulus who's also another player in this so I mean I was pretty yeah. impressed is that was that were you sending a message to Hendulus saying like look Oh no, not man! So well in this league or in this tournament. I wasn't. Come I wasn't up. feeling super confident. Like, uh, I got into a Mutaverse Muta War, and mm -hmm. those can be pretty volatile overall. Mm -hmm. But uh, we both went into it really even, so it, it felt good to come out of that game on top for sure. Uh, yeah. I wasn't. I don't think I was sending a message to Hendrilis. A message <laughs> would have been like a clear, just straight stomp. But uh, <laughs> I don't think yeah. we're gonna be doing that anytime soon. But uh, yeah, it was. It was a great series. I felt pretty I was on cloud nine after that well I mean you deserve it but yeah cool I, I I honestly think that you do you seem like a very modest guy all right so I just wanted to stand up for you a little bit because you weren't doing right. it fair enough fair um enough. but yeah cool so I mean what exactly does your normal day look like right now um like how much time are you spending in school personal projects starcraft practice time I mean just walk me through a normal day uh normal day like five days a week it's uh get up, uh, play probably like either play or uh, study depending on where we're at in, in finals and mm -hmm. midterms and whatnot. But uh, generally either play or study for like two and a half hours or so. Uh, normally a lot of the time I'll spend that time on the Korean ladder. That's like the one time where I actually get to play on the Korean ladder and uh, play against people who are actually, you know, an active server. So that feels good. Mm -hmm. uh, anytime I can, I'll do that. Then I'm at school for the next five hours. Uh, come home afterwards, usually spend about, that's where I get like two, three hours in of StarCraft and then off to work for basically the rest of the night. Uh, at that point, uh, my girlfriend and I are both home and we just relax throughout the rest of the night. So I don't really get to play uh, much like North American ladder during prime time. Most of the time, if I'm playing, it's like between uh, one and four o'clock Pacific time, which is usually pretty dead uh, most people are in school or working or what have you so mm -hmm. it's kind of a shame most of the games are like win win five six points lose like 18 22 it sucks <laughs> <laughs> it's no fun but yeah uh, most most days and then uh, two days off uh, usually it's on the weekdays and that's just like the the days that I'm either catching up on studying or catching up on Starcraft one of the two yeah, it sounds like you have a pretty busy schedule, and I'm actually always yeah. really impressed when I hear about any players that are waking up, and then, I mean, obviously doing work, uh, but also, like, waking up early and then playing StarCraft. I mean, do you find that hard to, like, find motivation to do it all? Um, not really, because most of the time it's like, uh, what better would I be doing at this time? I get up at, like, 6.30, and it's like, okay, well, I don't have school till 9. What, what am I supposed to be doing here at this this time anyway, so, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm sitting at my computer. Don't really, I don't really play many other games right now. Uh, so, yeah, I'll just hop on the Korean ladder. Like I said, I, I enjoy getting on the Korean ladder because I feel it's, uh, it's, it feels a lot different from the other two ladders, for sure. Yeah, I know that a lot of players like to say that they get a much better experience on the Korean ladder. You learn about different things. I think it was actually uh, Clarity Gaming Reborn from week two of Breaking Out said that he learned how to play like a Korean Zerg player on the ladder. I mean, do you feel the same way? Uh, yeah, I think that overall, like uh, between the three ladders, the Korean ladder is the most crisp. Um, it's probably not the ladder you want to go to if you want to learn like uh, macro games. I think Europe is actually a better ladder for that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Korea, like get, getting all end on Korea or all end on Korea versus North America. Uh, generally, like there's always a, 
you know, they'll read the situation and just not attack sometimes, which is something you just, you never see in North America. They're like, <laughs> fuck it, I made a sentry, you know, immortal, and I'm doing it. I don't care if you got, like, four spines <laughs> and hydralis. Like, they go for it. But on Korea, you know, they'll, they'll always have, like, a next step on their aggression, or they'll realize that they can't just win, like, a straight-up fight, so they'll, they'll split up their army and try and poke at you that way. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's definitely, you spend a lot of time on Korea, and you, you've, change the way that you think about the game a lot of the time. Like, uh, Zerg vs. Zerg, you know, the Muter vs. Muter was happening a lot, and I had one Korean just, like, constantly counterattack me, so for a while <laughs> I was like, so for a while I was like, screw it, I'm just not even taking gas to my third. I had, like, huge mineral economy and no gas, so I was, like, 15, 20 meterless under him, but he had, like, no drones since I'm just counterattacking. <laughs> it's, they think about the game a little differently, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it, you start to think about it differently when you play on Korea a lot more than NA or Europe. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's been good practice for you for, uh, I guess, I want to say the eventual time that you end up having to play maybe a Korean in a qualifier for a WCS America or something? Yeah, I mean, if you if you don't play against Korean uh, players, like not even the good ones, but mm -hmm. just in general, like... Uh, You'll, you'll get picked apart super fast. They multi-prong all the time. If they see that they can't win straight up, you know, people see that they have a worse army and then back off a lot where Koreans will start poking everywhere else except for your army. And it's, uh, if you're not used to facing that, like I'll, I'll not play Korea for two, three weeks and then just lose like 10 games because it's uh, really different. Yeah, it, it'll definitely help if, if you start facing them because they just do tiny little pokes all the time, like no risk, potential low reward pokes all the time. And uh, it's it's something you have to constantly be defending against. Hey, man, it's all about the practice. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, I also wanted to ask, you know, what kind of difficulties have you really faced trying to break out into the scene? Uh time management I think uh, a lot of the times for forever honestly it was just only grinding North America and I'm grinding it off hours so uh, I used to be playing a lot a lot of games during like the 8 you know 7 a.m. to like 4 p.m. Pacific time bracket which no one else good is playing on so it's it's like a constant struggle for like 80 points to, because you're you're losing way more than you're gaining and you're not really gaining good practice. Most people are just kind of all in during that or failing if it goes past like 15 minutes and it's it's pretty difficult to actually focus on things to improve when most games are like, oh, didn't scout it. That was a dumb loss. Uh, there's a lot of games that happen like that, which isn't like uh, to be too down on North America. I think there's actually pretty good talent coming up, but most of them are playing at night, you know, Minigun, Petraeus, mm -hmm. all of them. Basically everyone in the, you know, top 40 are playing at PM hours at my time, which is when I'm working. So it's pretty hard to actually get to play against them a lot of the times. Yeah, that's actually totally fair. Um, I'm kind of curious, do you get to do any kind of custom game practice with, I don't know, teammates or anybody else that you know then? Or is it uh, yeah. pretty hard? Yeah, that's how my Zerg vs. Terran got good in the first place. Uh, was just grinding. Like when I joined the team, I it was terrible Zerg vs. Terran, and one of mine's weren't uh, weren't nerfed yet. So, uh, which I still don't think they needed to be nerfed. But um, I, my whole team was like three, four Terrans, like two Zergs and zero Protoss. So I just played like tons and tons of custom games against the Terrans on our team. And yeah, actually developed it to be my best and still hold on to that pretty pretty hard. Yeah, I mean, Team Gravity, it's it's a pretty up-and-coming team, I would say. Um, you mm -hmm. guys actually did pretty well in the DETL. You guys managed to make it to the playoffs over a couple of other teams. You, again, had a really, really great series against Team Complexity, like a really close 4-3. Yeah. Um, uh, on the last game against Drunken Boy was like oh, man. down to the last 10 banelings that sucked. but yeah. Um, but yeah. I mean, how has Team Gravity been? I mean, you, you already kind of mentioned, like, you guys do have some really, really solid Terran players. Uh, what's it been like on Team Gravity? A lot of Protoss after that. <laughs> we, That's true. We, we recruited, like, six Protosses after what I'm talking <laughs> about. 
But yeah, uh, it's been really good. I, I don't think I would have kept the motivation for StarCraft, honestly, if I wasn't having uh, these games to, to practice for. And like I said, grinding North American Ladder at off hours is not really fun or productive for the most part. You really have to be looking at yourself more than the other person mm -hmm. uh, during those hours. And when you like lose to an unscouted T-Rex or something like that, it's, it's something that you just kind of go, well, that was a waste of time. I didn't really learn anything one way or the other. And then you start to get in that mindset too. That's like the biggest trap is you just start going, well, well, that game was stupid. It was a dumb loss. And there's still things you could have been picking up on, but it's it's hard to constantly keep yourself focused on uh, fixing aspects of your game when the games feel dumb. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that's probably the the worst part of it, I think. So yeah, uh, gravity sticking with or sticking with gravity definitely kept uh, the motivation and playing in a lot of leagues, playing against a lot of good players uh, is always fun. Whenever you take out a good player, a good team, it always feels good until you lose the next game. And that's part of it. Uh, I used to be like super nervous. I remember my first game, it was against uh, somebody named Lightning, who I don't even know if he plays anymore or whatever. But I was by the end of it, my hands were just like shaking like crazy. Afterwards, I had to like breathe to calm down. And uh, yeah, ever since then, like if if I had never done that and went over to that LAN the mm -hmm. as my first competition, I would have just been a nervous wreck there, <laughs> just been hor horribly. Yeah. So has that practice and that motivation been the main reason that uh, you kind of stick around with Gravity, or are there any other kind of things that you're getting offered, like I don't know, salary or connections or anything else? Oh yeah, we get you know hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in gambling oh, money to be yeah. you know the usual. No, it's mostly uh, practice, practice and motivation. Just being on a team is is really nice for that. Uh, it's a good group of people. It's fun to uh, shoot the shit with them and uh, talk about the game, especially. But yeah, I'm I'm always really interested, uh, especially with a lot of the newer teams, because I I it's really weird. But I whenever I talk with maybe more established teams, oftentimes I hear like, oh yeah, we don't really have like a scheduled practice time or anything um does gravity have like you know weekly or bi-weekly like kind of scheduled practices with players or anything uh it's not really like a structured thing mm -hmm. um it's i think starcraft in general a lot of everyone's kind of working on their own schedule and a lot of times you know everyone has their own week matches so like um my strongest matchup is Terran. so at this point playing against other Terrans is not really a focus for me. I'd much rather be playing against uh, Protoss or Zerg, but someone else has a different preference. It's hard to actually get that uh, scheduled, and especially when you're playing the same people, mm -hmm. you unintentionally start blind countering each other, so I can tell you exactly how everyone on my team is going to play a matchup. Usually, you know, we'll be sitting in like a Skype call during a tournament, and I'll be like, all right, so Serenity's gonna go you know, uh, two two stalker before Nexus. He's gonna push out and he's gonna pull back, and then he's gonna drop his Stargate. He's gonna go one Oracle, <laughs> and he's gonna oh, go into man. Blink Stalkers, and like it'll happen, like exactly like it. So it's like knowing that in game, how can I play against Serenity over and over and go, okay, well I'm gonna scout what he's doing, wink, and then oh I just went I went speed first. Wow, weird. That's crazy. I guess the two stalkers did nothing. Or you'll be in like a spot where it's like, oh, my overlord's dead. Mm. I'll just make my spore at this time because I know the oracle's flying straight to my main. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, it's yeah. hard to play blind and practice correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I guess that does make a lot of sense. Um, but still, I'm sure that it is useful to get some practice against those players when you can. Um, mm -hmm. As I'm sure, oh, like, sure. yeah, you mentioned like it helped against your with your ZVT and stuff, but. Yeah, Beast I'm... is like best T-Rex in North America, so <laughs> practice oh, the crap man. out of that. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into the fun stuff, which right, uh, I, th I think players really like, and that is a little bit more about the gameplay. So, I mean, you've already played World of Warcraft, so we're going to play a little bit of, we're going to do a little bit of role play. I don't know if you played an RP server. You probably didn't. Did no, you? I didn't, no. Okay, well, we're going to do a little bit of RPing, okay? Sure, let's so do it. We're going we're gonna to imagine that there is this character, he spawns into the world, his name is Dustin Browder, okay? <laughs> and 
this is actually, you know, it's, uh, I don't know if you know, like, the Mount Hygel stuff in, like, World of Warcraft, but oh, yeah. basically it was, like, World of Warcraft, for anyone who doesn't know, it's World of Warcraft's equivalent of mountain climbing, all right? So mm-hmm. Dustin Browder, he's basically doing, like, World of Warcraft mountain climbing, right? He's climbing up, he's climbing up, he's trying to get as high as he can, he's working really hard, you know, sweat is beating down his bald head, <laughs> and then he suddenly realizes, like, wait, this, this, this rock looks really, really familiar, Turns out it's a destructible rock. <laughs> and it actually ends up getting destroyed. And he ends up falling, like, takes some devastating damage. Uh, what was it? Terrible, 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 terrible damage. Um, and, you know, he's still alive and everything, but he's unable to work at his company, Activision Blizzard, after this heart-wrenching defeat in World of Warcraft. And they say, you know what? We're looking, we're looking around for somebody smart. This guy, he's really interested in game design. All right, he's about to graduate. <laughs> We're going to hire this guy. All right, let's do it. If Chris. only we could find that one yeah. person somewhere. Well, if only we could find that one person. Then, you know what they said? You know what? This guy named Kratos on Team Gravity, he's super duper smart. He's really interested in game design. We're going to replace <laughs> Dustin Browder with him. Now, Kratos, you, in this role-playing universe, have complete control over everything that Blizzard does in terms of StarCraft 2, you can decide whether you want to change WCS, you can change the game balance by, you know, throwing paper airplanes at David Kim saying, like, Nerf Protoss or something. <laughs> like, you can do whatever you want. What do you do with this newfound power? Abuse the hell out of it. <laughs> <Everything>. <laughs> uh, let's see. What would I do with it? I really just feel like most of the game's problems, like... I don't think Protoss is imbalanced. I'll just, I'm going to start whining a lot here. I'll preface this by saying I don't think Protoss is imbalanced. But I do think Protoss makes the game worse than it should be. And um, reason being, you have like just the, the force field mechanic and the warp field or uh, warp gate mechanics along with the mothership core don't work. Obviously, they're different races, but. In, a, in an RTS like StarCraft, everything kind of generally has a same focus, right? Like, you have a focus on economy first, then you have a focus on uh, producing units. There's a tech advantage, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a risk-reward on investing in any of those. But right now, I feel like Protoss, with the way their mechanics work, don't actually abide by the same rules as the other two races, which I guess people can argue is okay, but it just it feels wrong uh, especially coming where StarCraft 1 was to where StarCraft 2 is. So like to elaborate uh, further, it feels wrong that like every single map has to have certain rules. Like you saw Daedalus Point come out and how many Protosses have you seen play on that map like ever, <laughs> right? Like it's because they have to have right now in the current scheme of things and it's not their fault. They have to have certain ramps that can be defendable by a force field or two preferably, you know, just two. And Daedalus Point had, like, a six force field ramp to begin with, and now it's down to, like, four or three or whatever. Um, so the map's just, like, unplayable for Protoss. And because of that, like, I find Zerg vs. Zerg and Zerg vs. Terran on Daedalus Point to be probably the most fun I've had. Uh, it's a great map for Zerg vs. Terran and Zerg vs. Protoss, or uh, Zerg vs. Zerg. But because of that, that map's going to be gone next map season, uh, simply because... You know, a third of the matchups aren't going to get played on it ever. Period. Uh, map design gets like super constricted because Protosses have to have a third that's defendable, but it can't be too defensible, or else Protoss is overpowered, and then it's just PVPs on that map. So it's like it's always this like huge restriction based on the map on uh, basically solely because of force field mechanic. It's kind of dumb. And then uh, it feels like with the mothership core. Protoss can kind of invest way more into tech than the other races, which, again, it's it's kind of okay, because maybe that's Protoss' thing, right? They're gas-heavy units, so they should have better tech than the other races. But it feels, like, a little too good. And then they can just kind of, like... Like, every time I watch a Protoss first turn and they're investing in two techs off one gateway, I'm just like, God, why does... How is this possible? And like a Terran will be pushing up a ramp versus a sentry in a mothership core. And it's just like Protoss is in no danger. Just like throw the sunglasses on and casually photon overcharge their Nexus <laughs> and that's it. So it's like it's uh 
just doesn't feel too good, and and the whole warp gate mechanic just kills defenders' advantage, which is a staple in every single matchup, in every single RTS since the dawn of time, except for Protoss and Starcraft two, and it's just it's odd. I don't. So like I, I think Protoss should go back to again. This is all like uh, dreaming, but from a game design point, I think it's much better to have gateways back to the way they were, have force fields. Force fields can exist, but have them be microable from both sides. Like once the force fields are down, that's it. Like there's no more micro to be had. Like health on them or or something would be fantastic. Or just not make them as strong as they are. Make I don't even know what you would do to that. I think that no force field in, at all is preferable. But if they want to keep it, put health on it. I don't know. But I think that most of the games uh, weirdness comes from the Protoss race. There's not like a map. Like, I remember when Taldorim Alta was first announced, and it's like, this is going to be bullshit because Zerg. And that was their response. We're like, okay. And it turned out to be a pretty uh, balanced map through and through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I just think that overall it's, uh, it's a shame. I think Protoss restricts a lot of the interesting things that can come out of this game. And it kind of took a step further with adding the Mothership Core and HOTS, but... Like I said, I think the game's balanced. I don't think that Protoss is beyond broken. I think that Terran and Zerg are both finding ways to pressure them, despite how greedy the Mothership Core play can be. So it's mm -hmm. it's good. Um, I don't think there's anything hugely needing to be changed. Um, you mentioned like the WCS. I wouldn't even begin to presume to... Uh, tell you how to fix anything on WCS. I think they're doing a pretty good job as far as uh, giving North American players a shot at actually competing in it. I don't think it would be right to like close all the gates and say Koreans can piss off and all that good <laughs> stuff. So I think they're doing an okay job. I think obviously with all things Blizzard they're doing it way they did it way too slowly. Uh, it was handled pretty poorly at first I think but what can you do? It's Blizzard. Um, yeah, I think that's that's about it. I think the, I think all races are in a pretty good spot, uh, balance wise. Obviously, I just think Protoss, Protoss mechanics are frustrating to play against, and I'm sure it's frustrating for them too, right? Like you miss a force field and you lose the game. It's like, oh well, that's stupid that I'm that fragile. Like, I think the game would be much better if force field was gone, mothership core was, you know, a walking unit. If that thing wasn't. I've been saying this for a while now to my team. If that thing couldn't fly, I think every problem with the Mothership Core is gone. Because you can't just sit a Mothership Core like 75% outside the map on Zerg and just be like, oh, well, it's coming out of their base at all times. And, uh, you know, it would actually be snipeable before like 10 minutes by a Zerg player, which should be fantastic. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, overall the game's, the game's good. Protoss just makes it dumb sometimes. <laughs> okay, well, go. that was actually a, that was a lot of information. Um, I'm really curious, what are your thoughts about, and you kind of touched really, really lightly on this, uh, map design, and do you think that, at least maybe temporarily, because I know that uh, it's been said multiple times by Blizzard that, you know, no changes are really going to happen until, you know, Legacy of the Void, no big changes that we don't love, right? Um do you think that until then, map design can sort of handle uh, a lot of the, I guess, situations that or pressures that Protoss put on map designers? Yeah, I mean, map design can fix everything by itself. You saw that in uh, Brood War, right? Like, if, mm -hmm. if Protoss was really broken, then put the natural, like, nine miles away from the main, and how is Protoss going to mm -hmm. defend both, right? So, like you can go to extremes and always make the game balanced through map design, which I think is probably the community's best fight against uh, Blizzard, because obviously everything Blizzard does is going to be super slow. Uh, changes are probably going to be underwhelming. Uh, they're not going to change the mechanics of things. They're going to change the, the statistics of it. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, Blizzard does, you know, game balancing. They don't, they don't change up the design of the game ever. Once I mean once, once the expansion pack hits, that's like you're done. Uh, they'll tweak numbers until statistically it's balanced, and then yeah. that's it. it. I'm not gonna argue against that. <laughs> um, 
certainly turned out to be relatively true, but you know, let's let's kind of shift focus away from Blizzard and focus on you, Kratos. You are actually the highlight of the show. So, all right, all right. Let's you kind of you gave us a little bit of a description of your playstyle in the application video, but for anyone that you know maybe wasn't tuning in for that little segment or whatever, describe your playstyle, your strengths and your weaknesses um, in StarCraft okay. Two. Uh, I think uh, my strengths. I have pretty pretty solid mechanics, um, and I use the extra time that I get from the mechanics to constantly kind of poke in and out. Uh, I think. Overall, my multitasking is pretty good. Um, I try to be pretty aggressive. Uh, most most of the times in like a Zerg versus Terran, whenever I'm being attacked, there's a counterattack of you know X amount of lings and a few banes just to make sure that uh, it's punishing him for moving out. I try to do the same thing in Zerg versus Zerg. Uh, my aggression in Zerg versus Protoss is pretty bad. I think my understanding of the game or that matchup in general is pretty poor, so mm -hmm. I have a hard time uh, doing the same thing. Most of the games against uh, Protoss, to be perfectly honest, are free balling. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go into it. And I'm like, all right, let's see what he's doing. <laughs> that's about that's about it, right? It's, it's reactive, so, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can be reactive with a, a strong uh, strategy as well. You know, so uh, I, I just don't think uh, overall the game knowledge I have for Protoss is very great. But against uh, Protoss, or against Terran and, and Zerg, I, I tend to pick people apart as best I can. You know, winning small little fights here and there and punishing over steps and under uh, committals and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I think it's it's fun. I think most of the time you'll you'll rarely ever see me like sit back and and swarm host viper static yeah. defense like I did that for like a week and lost Ooh. half my soul so <laughs> that was that was the Solid end of that. What you can. Yeah, which isn't to say like uh, I won't make swarm host, but like any game where I make over ten swarm hosts at a time is like I can feel pieces of it falling away, so I just try to <laughs> avoid that as best as possible. And I think Swarmos are actually a pretty good core unit for uh, against Protoss. But yeah. like 10 of them, 12 of them at the max. Any more than that, and you're like basically forcing yourself into the turtle mode. <laughs> That's totally fair. And, you know, I have got to say, I've watched you play. Like, you're a ton of fun to watch, um, which I can definitely appreciate. You're a very aggressive player. And I really, I think that you put it really well in your application video. You like to pick players apart. Mm -hmm. um, I have to ask. When I watch you, I sometimes feel like I'm watching a, a really good Terran player off race a Zerg, except they also know what they're doing. <laughs> Is there a reason why you pick Zerg instead of Terran? Oh, uh, I picked Zerg initially because I was like, it was back in what, 2010 when yeah. Fruit Dealer hadn't even won his you know, <laughs> his first thing, right? Oh, like man. it was. Zerg can't even win a single game against Terran, right? This is yeah. this is bullshit. How can Zerg players ever win? And I was coming from my high and mighty of World of Warcraft, like, oh man, I'm oh. I'm a gladiator, I'm top of my server, you know, I'm the fucking king of video <laughs> games. So I'm gonna show all these people that I can play the worst race and still beat them with it. So that was like the the original plan, and uh, I originally played Terran, but uh, that was for like a month and a half. And then switched over to Zerg and enjoyed the mechan or the style of it, enjoyed the production of it. And like I said back then, it was like any time a Zerg was winning games back then, it was like holy shit, how good is Fruit Dealer? He's yeah. gonna be around forever. Fruit Dealer and Idra man. <laughs> then that didn't happen. Yeah, exactly. Idra was almost the best Zerg in the world until he lost. <laughs> yeah, I. I'm actually really curious. Have you ever considered since then maybe uh, trying out Terran or switching, or is it just too much trouble at this point? Uh, it's kind of too much trouble. I've already invested so much in Azurg at this point, yeah. and uh, to be honest, I have like a huge amount of respect for good uh, foreign Terran players. Uh, anytime, anytime I've like off raced as Terran or something, I'll be like, you know, I'll quickly get to like low masters or something. And then just start losing because uh, you know I'll, I'll miss an engagement or miss split of bailings or I'll, I won't hit a timing or something like that and it's like shit or like I'll win a fight and 
miss macroed at home during the fight and uh, mm -hmm. have nothing and die to the follow-up attack or whatever. I think, uh, mechanically speaking, Terrans uh, deserve quite a lot of respect. I, again, I don't think it's like a Terran was a weak thing, but I do definitely think that the threshold for a good Terran and the barrier to entry to being a good turn is a lot higher than especially like Protoss, uh, especially, <laughs> no offense, but especially Zerg as well. I think, uh, like the, I've said a few times, I think uh, between the races, like Zerg requires the most, I think, game knowledge of your opponent's race. Uh, you need to know what you can get away with, uh, what when you should be making drones, like every single larva you spend is a decision. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas I think Terran's really straightforward in that regard, right? You just keep making yeah. SCVs, you keep making whatever you're making, yeah. and there's really not much thought to it. It's just like you become a robot. Yeah. Um, whereas Protoss is kind of in the middle. There's It's not as hard to... And then the, the flip side was Zerg is super easy to actually macro, right? Like you, you S and Z and hold that thing down until you're out of minerals. Uh, if you're if you're hitting your injects right and you have enough larva, like actually producing units is pretty simple. Whereas Terran's uh, definitely the hardest. Just the APM required to make your units as Terran is a lot higher, mm -hmm. and forcing yourself to constantly be that kind of robotic player is uh, is tough. And I think Protoss is in the middle on both. I think it's uh, probably harder to. It's just slightly harder to uh, constantly macro as Protoss. Uh, just because you have to keep the cycles in your head, uh, where it, and then it's less to you know you don't have to be as much of a detective as Protoss or as Zerg yeah. as Protoss. So I think they're kind of in between the two races. But uh, yeah, it, I I just enjoy Zerg overall though. Um, it, it's always a good feeling when the whole map is lit up like a Christmas tree, <laughs> and you have like Zerg you know creep right outside their base, and they'll just like you know they'll send a drop one way and it'll get picked off as they're moving out and the whole army gets surrounded by you know <laughs> three different sides it feels really good when you get a game like that um, and you can always tell how you're doing is there based off of how much vision you have generally it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a good feeling to have map hacks basically <laughs> yeah that does actually lead me to my next little question which is uh, you know you definitely sort of peg yourself as an analytical player I mean what exactly goes into that? Um, I know that you actually called yourself an analytical uh, player in your application video. Does that mean that you know you have a really good preparation for particular matches because uh, you get to study a lot of the replays and stuff and you can just kind of analyze or is it a lot of in the midst of a game, you're really good at picking uh, out like what you should be doing? Like what, what exactly do you think your advantage is in that? I think I'm good at uh, in between games figuring stuff mm -hmm. out. So if I place the uh, or play against like the same person multiple times, I'll usually get better throughout the series. Um, uh, you don't really get a whole lot. Like, in if I were to be practicing or like you know watching replays of every single person in every single mm -hmm. team league, we would be like <laughs> exhausted. I wouldn't be playing StarCraft. I'd be coaching it at that point. Um, so like I can't really do that so much, and I think that like my free balling decision making is uh, pretty poor at times. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I'll I'll just randomly like I'll get stuck in Roach Hydra Corruptor a lot of times because you know I'll just be like okay got Hydra's up defended that okay gonna do a Roach Hydra push fuck it got defended by Colossus <laughs> how do you beat uh... Colossus Corruptors and then you're like how did I end up here I know this is bad <laughs> like. So uh, I think it's like I can I can map out like Zerg vs Terran, Zerg vs Zerg really really well. Um, mm -hmm. My scouting in general is usually always on point. So uh, when I get the information and I know what I'm facing uh, and I have it mapped out in my head, yeah. I have Zerg vs Zerg and Zerg vs Terran very well mapped out in my head. Like what kind of responses I should be doing when, and if they're within a degree of you know what I'm expecting, it's usually pretty solid. Uh, I change my style Zerg vs Protoss a hundred times a week and <laughs> and uh, trying to map that out each time is really difficult. You know, I'll watch like TLO take one gas at 340 and I'm like, oh that's sick, I'm going to start doing that. And then that just blows all of the crap that I've been working on the past week of, you know, going gasless four queen against gateway expand Protoss. And I started to map all that out and then started to try this thing. So. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's probably why I'm so uh, spotty against Protoss is like mm -hmm. day to day even I'll just be like well uh, Hydrolink's been working I'm gonna start doing Hydrolink and Immuta and then it'll stop working I'm like well mm -hmm. that's okay because I'm going swarm hosts into uh, Roachboro or whatever so uh, I never get it really mapped out against Protoss and it's just pretty hard to map it out against Protoss in general is that more of a just like a consistent thing or is it a past couple of months you've had difficulty mapping it up versus Protoss? I have been bad against Protoss since <laughs> like since Hydro uh, Roach Viper. I think when uh, Hydro Roach Viper pushes were legit, um, everything kind of boiled up to that point. Like you would you would scout for all ins first, you would go Roach Ling if it was an all in. Otherwise, you get up to Roach Hydra Viper because he took a third base, and then yeah. you do your push, and then you transition from there one way or the other. So I think the game was actually uh, more mechanical at that point. Mm -hmm. Now it's very, like, whatever style you do, you have to have an answer for everything, and there's a lot of answers. And if you mm -hmm. misread it, like, it's the worst feeling is there, you'll be, like, reading into something, you're like, okay, he's chronoing on the cyber. And then you're like, so he's probably doing, or he's likely to do a gateway pressure attack. And then you'll scout in, and you'll see like three gateways building in the front and lose your overlord. And you're like, fuck, he's doing like an eight gate all. And so you're like making a bunch of units. And then you realize that during this whole time, you uh, lost your Ling that was watching the third base. And then you have that oh. like, you have that feeling in your stomach. You're like, no. And you walk over there, and there's like a done nexus. And you're like, <sighs> that's. That's it's the worst feeling ever. It's it's hard to, when you're doing new things, like if, if you stick to your one style um, for a while, like always keeping that uh, zergling at the third or always knowing when you should be scouting for this and that becomes second nature. Mm -hmm. But when you keep switching things, you're like, okay, my next step is this. And you're not thinking about what he's doing for a split yeah. second and you get you get behind in your thinking and you're like, You'll start getting supply cap more often. You'll start, you know, sitting on idle larva. You'll start banking. All that kind of stuff happens, yeah. and that's like the last six months of Zerg vs Protoss for me. I just need to like sit down and work on two styles, and stick with it. And I tell myself this literally every week, and still stick. I'm like, no, that style sucks. I'm gonna go with a different one every. <laughs> All right. Well, I I hope that you do manage to sort it all out before the uh, tournament There's that ends up happening. There's a lot of Protoss in this year. <laughs> there's like what four Protoss, I think. Well, four, actually, five? no. Right now, there's uh, let's see, there's one Terran. Yeah, there's one Terran. uh, four Zergs, I think. Four Zerg and three Protoss. Three okay. Protoss. We'll keep the Protoss yeah. on the other side of the bracket, <laughs> and I'll be super happy. Get get four Zergs and one side of like <laughs> exactly. one group. And then three Protoss and a Terran in the other. Uh, th throw me oh in with God. EJK. I, I love EJK, but I feel really good against Terran. And <laughs> throw, him, throw him with me in like first, second round. All right, movie. all right. Make it happen. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing how that is going to go later on. But, uh, you know, before we move on to the next little segment, I do want to ask, do you consider yourself to have any rivals, either friendly rivals or less friendly rivals? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, I would say, let's see, friendly rivals. Uh, Serenity and I have a pretty good friendly rival. Uh, mm -hmm. We had like a pizza cup, and it was an in house, you know, for a pizza. Yeah. And I ended up beating him, I think, 3 0 the first time and 3 1 the second time to win the pizza. So I was pretty stoked about that. <laughs> Ever since then, we've been like, I think actually on ladder, he's gotten the better of me most times. Uh, but I still got him in that tournament, so I would consider that a, a friendly rival. Um, who else? Uh, Cham, before he joined my team, I always like had a huge mental block against him. Every time I played him in Zerg vs. Zerg, I'd be like, you know, 10 drones ahead, like, army ahead, and still somehow managed to lose the game. I'd get, like, so mad at that. Power of Mexico! <laughs> Yeah, seriously, <laughs> like, I would always throw those games so that I had, like, a huge, huge mental block against him. Um, outside of the team, I don't know, uh, I guess a uh, less than friendly one would be, like, against Believe, who's in Breaking Out, so yeah. uh, we've had a few moments of BM on both sides, so I wouldn't say we're the greatest of friends, but we keep finding each other in tournaments, and uh, <laughs> there you go, so... 
I think that's probably it. If I, yeah, that's probably it. Honestly, right, well, let me let me write this on my hand. All right, put right. Kratos <laughs> in group dare. with Naya. Don't or you believe. dare. <laughs> make make it for like the grand final or something. That'll make it even more dramatic. Oh my god, that would be beautiful. Um, but yeah, cool. So let's move on. To I the guess next. Uh, I guess oh. one last one would be Siphon because he knocked me out of like two different. He knocked me out of the round of eight WCS or oh man sixteen. Uh, yeah. And so I, I feel like I, I feel like I really fucked that game up too. Uh, Cause I like, uh, if I showed you the replay, you'd, you'd cry with me. But like, we were either 1 1 or 2 2. I don't remember. I think it was best of fives by then. So I think it was 2 2. And he always did this like blink uh, all in off of gateway, like straight blink, no upgrades, nothing, which I just couldn't beat. So he took a game off me. And like every series we've ever played, he's always taken that game off me. I'm pretty sure I can hold it now, but uh, yeah, I had just lost like every single time he did that. Um, and it was like 2 2 uh, on Yansu, and like uh, I 9 pulled him, which was Ooh. like terrifying. Or I think ten I 10 pulled uh, Protoss. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got like three, three probes, which is like way more damage than you need off of eight Zerglings, and mm -hmm. forced like 45 second late. Uh, Nexus and all that kind of stuff. So like I was feeling good. I was so far ahead. I got like another pair of Zerglings in, killed like three or four more probes and oh saw the God. immortal sentry coming in. So I'm like, holy fuck, this is so good. I'm gonna play cats. And I'm like oh. I don't think I've I've lost like two games against cats. And he was the one who ended up qualifying for Challenger and I'm like, fuck yeah, I can't wait to to play cats. And uh oh Yeah, God. so he pushed across on Yansu with Immortal Sentry. I have like 140 supply to like 90, <laughs> like the game's oh, over, no. and I got like a, I got like a, 270 degree surround on him. Everything was good, and I clicked on an immortal to try and kill it, and it was out oh, of range no. of everything. And I'm just sitting there, and I looked away. I'm like injecting everywhere else because the immortal's dead, right? Like there's no way that fucker lived. And I look back, and like all of my roaches are just stuck, like running into force fields, oh. dying. And uh, and by the time I realized it, I was like, oh shit! I pulled back, uh, still almost held afterwards after losing like thirty free supply. Oh, still, God. still pulled back and almost held, but didn't. And I felt miserable. That was so miserable. Oh. Yeah. And then I faced him again in, I think, the next WCS qualifier, like the very first round, got knocked out again by him. And I was like, mm. Mm. So, yeah, I'd say that's another. I don't think if. I don't, I doubt he sees it as a rivalry because he's just like, oh, free. Thanks for the WCS <laughs> ticket. But, uh, yeah, that wasn't good. I even, like, went into the replay and, like, resumed from replay. And I, like, walked up. And uh, as soon as this round happened, we started. I oh. took him in and I, like, boxed everything a clicked and like did this and just crushed the army and i was like god damn it i can't believe i did that that is frustrating man well so, uh, hey maybe you'll get your chance at revenge this yeah, is why i need to put a, this is why you want me to put a protoss in your group yeah, sounds no, like you need though. to beat these protoss players let them let them kill each other that'll be way better <laughs> leave one left for the finals uh, maybe <laughs> maybe if he has like i don't know in the middle of a heart seizure or something, then I'm pretty confident <laughs> about it. <laughs> oh my god, that reminds me of a, a question I used to ask people, like, in pregame interviews. I was like, if you could, like, give food poisoning to one of your <laughs> opponents, like, who would it be in this tournament? And I'd always get, like, the weirdest, like, are you, are you, are you okay kind of answers. It's like you would just be like, oh, dude, this guy, this That's guy, really like, all of these right? Protoss players. <laughs> <laughs> just screw them. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. Whoever's conducting the warp gates, just <laughs> have him do that. Bust them all. Oh my god. Yeah, that executor, yeah. F that guy. F that guy. He's caused me a lot of trouble. Well, speaking of F, we're going to talk a little bit about the future. You like that transition? That was good. That was, that like, was, that was smooth. Um, okay. But, you know, I, I did want to know, like, what exactly is your goal in StarCraft? Well, why exactly are you playing and what is what is your giant aspiration? Is it just you know getting to WCS Challenger League America? Is it win a GSL? Are you planning to like one v one David Kim and like Starcraft one day oh, and just like I'll be the people's justice? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, what you is go. your goal in Starcraft? Um, 
For the current, uh, I'd like to focus on winning this tournament. That's like something I've been uh, super motivated for now. I'd really like to win this tournament. Um, I think overall, I'm just trying to get as best I can. I recognize that like there's, you know, I'll listen to like Petraeus who's playing like, shout out to Petraeus, he plays like fucking ridiculous amounts of games. He play, you know, he's like saying he's playing like 44 games a day, which is awesome for him. I wish I could do the same, but it's just not. So realistically speaking, I don't think that I would ever be able to like uh, win a GSL given the current situation. <laughs> Shocker, I know. <laughs> But uh, so honestly, I'd like to. I think it's definitely doable to uh, get into Challenger. Um, definitely doable to make it far in this tournament, uh, and just keep improving from there. If like, you know, all of a sudden I'm in a Challenger and play against uh, best of five, you know, I get lucky like Desro, like uh, someone like Apocalypse who I feel would be beatable. Then uh, all of a sudden I find myself on you know a salary and actually making enough money to, you know, play StarCraft instead of going to work and just going from there, you know, that'd be great. But realistically speaking, uh, I'll get as good as StarCraft I, as I can. Um, overall, probably not going to have a huge future in it. I would certainly love to. Um, but it's it's my competitive fix. Uh, ever since, like, WoW Arenas, it's, I found out that didn't really enjoy playing RPGs much anymore. Uh, I didn't have the fun in like Skyrim as uh, I had in Morrowind back in the day, or like I didn't have as much fun writing in World of Warcraft as EverQuest, and so on and so forth. And like uh, most single-player games now, I kind of get burnt out. I enjoy having uh, something to compare yourself to competitively and something to always be improving. Uh, anytime, anytime I play a game and I'm like. Yeah, it's playing, you know, like, how much better can you honestly play Skyrim, given your tools? It's more just a time investment equals reward uh, at that point, whereas you can always be learning. Uh, you're, you're way more mentally engaged playing StarCraft than any other game I've ever played uh, by leaps and bounds. And uh, it's just more fun. It's a competitive outlet, and that's why I enjoy it. That's a really good answer, and that also leads me into my next question of, and you kind of answered this a little bit, but if you have the opportunity to, would you go full-time into pro gaming? And I, I think you kind of mentioned that your answer would be leaning toward yes, and... Maybe? <laughs> maybe. That's basically, it's like, it depends on the circumstances, right? Like, if, pay me what I'm going to be making at work in a week, and <laughs> sure. As a software developer, man, I quit. that's going to be hard. I quit. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so if you know if uh, if I was making money on StarCraft like I was making waiting tables, then sure, let's do it. I'll quit my job tomorrow and uh, dedicate that time to StarCraft instead. Uh, if I finish school and you want to pay me more money to continue going full time in StarCraft, sure, let's do it. Why not? <laughs> Who would say no to that, right? But uh, realistically, probably won't happen. So uh, I, I doubt full time, but I don't think I would. I don't think I'll straight up quit StarCraft anytime soon either. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. If and every game goes into Swarm Host <laughs> Static Defense, okay, I'm done. <laughs> You're not going to innovate the, the aggressive Swarm Host style? <laughs> what aggressive start Swarm dropping, Host style? Start dropping like three Swarm Hosts at like all five <laughs> okay. mineral lines. Yeah. The 15 Swarm Host drop. There you go. All right. Um, well, you know. I do have to ask also that you are actually a really, really good player. You're a ton of fun to watch. You've beaten great players like the Complexity team and DETL, like QXE, Hendralis. Like you've shown good games against other really great players. Why don't more people know who you are? Um, I don't know. Uh, again, I think I think kind of the same reason, right? Uh, I don't I don't stream as much as I would like to. Um, Sometimes it's because it just uh, strictly wouldn't work, as in uh, there's stuff going on at the apartment it wouldn't be conducive to streaming. Uh, my schedule changes pretty rapidly from day to day, so it's hard to be like, well, I'm going to stream you know, from 1 to 3 o'clock every day. Um, something will come up, and I, I'll plan to stream where I want. 
I won't do it or you know I'll look at the time and be like well I could be streaming and uh, or I could actually be practicing like it's it's hard to be improving while streaming uh, for the most part so when you're only playing like four hours a day anyway dedicating like two three hours of that to streaming means you're really not getting much better it's just grinding louder at that point mm -hmm. um, and again I think playing off peak hours definitely you know most of the uh, top players probably don't know who I am from that you know it's it's uh, they'll rarely see me on ladder at that point um, I have been getting like where you know it's pretty cool going to like the European server or something and someone will be like hey I saw you uh, play against uh, seed or whatever mm -hmm. it's like you played really good games it's like oh cool <laughs> who knew the people actually watched that right so it's it's cool when that happens but uh, yeah I don't stream nearly as much as I could or should uh, or want to really, um, but it's it's hard to actually make that work into the schedule as well. Uh, I don't have a whole hell of a lot of free time to be doing that. And the final question that I always ask everyone that comes on the show, uh, alongside that last question, is where do you see yourself in two years, ideally, both in terms of StarCraft as well as you know every other aspect of your life that you find important. Okay. Um, ideally, uh, so like there's there's a couple avenues I think. Ideally, it would be uh, I do super well on StarCraft and I'm uh, competing heavily. But um, I would say ideally, what I'll be looking towards is uh, in Seattle, pretty good job. Uh, maybe playing StarCraft in the time, splitting my time half and half. If you know I'm doing really well or you know, just playing StarCraft as a hobby at that point uh, and working well, uh, married at that point, probably. I basically, I, I joke all the time, people are like, when are, everyone around me asks, when are you getting married, when are you getting married? It's like, slow down, it's only been five and a half years, right? <laughs> Look, you have to be prepared to split up that rare epic mount, okay? <laughs> exactly. There's, right? there's things you got to get in order first. Yeah, but no, uh, it, seriously, I would... Uh, I basically said uh, I'd like to get married whenever uh, whenever I'm able to like you know actually provide right now I'm like a poor shit college student it seems kind of weird to like take care of you for the rest of life after I start making money right yeah. <laughs> feels weird but yeah so uh, in Seattle working a job maybe playing Starcraft uh, competitively if I'm doing it really well or you know maybe not but that's probably what we're looking at. I would, I would love to get, uh, you know, leave StarCraft, you know, uh, head head high anyway. Like, you know, I, I can look back and be like, yeah, I had a shot at getting into Challenger or Premier, and I got into it, rather than like, I had a shot but I didn't play enough, so that sucks. Maybe I could have done well, but you'll never know. That's that's like the thing that I fear the worst about StarCraft, because like any given day, like I haven't been playing much in the last week from school. Uh, and various stuff, and it's like the motivation to then get on uh, this week is kind of like eh, I'm gonna suck, and I have to go through that whole process of getting the mechanics, you know, getting the rust off and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So just keeping motivated is kind of hard, but uh, yeah, if if I finished and looked back at this time and I was like, I lost the motivation, but I could have done it, that's gonna be pretty disappointing. So I just don't. I don't want to leave StarCraft with like that feeling of like, I was good enough to do it, I just didn't have the opportunity or the time or whatever, whether it's my own fault or someone else's. Cool. And, you know, I wish you the absolute best of luck in that. Um, I know you definitely have the potential, and I'm really looking forward <laughs> to seeing what you're capable of. But with that being said, that is actually going to conclude the interview. This, you know, I think this actually is almost definitely the longest interview we've done so far on the show. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. And, well, and no let's crying. Try for that. No crying. You failed. No crying. Oh, man. Yeah, well, we I'm still sorry. have time to do shout outs. So if you want to okay. shout out to your wife and, you know, get a couple of tears going or something. Okay. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Shout out to my, my future wife, Vicky. Uh, she's awesome. She's uh, been super supportive of everything. So uh, kudos to her. She's amazing. Um, Shout out to Team Gravity. They're awesome. They've kept me motivated throughout the ups and the downs. 
Uh, I've had my emo moments in Skype where I'm just like, fuck this game, fuck Protoss. I suck at this game, I'll never be good. <laughs> Leave Skype. Everyone's just like, okay. <laughs> like, what happened? I'm like, it lost against Protoss. Oh. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Team Gravity. Uh, I wouldn't be still playing at this point, honestly, if I wasn't uh, contacted by Beast. Who, uh, oh yeah, he's probably one of the people I would have mentioned for a rivalry. But uh, I'm digressing. That proxy 2 racks. <laughs> Dude, Wings of Liberty, he beat me every game. I used to get so mad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so shout out to Team Gravity. Shout out to Team Gravity sponsored Android TV Box in Canada. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. All right, cool. Well, you know, before I really quickly go over my shout outs, did you want to have any, uh, did you have any final words you wanted to say? Kind of, I don't know, advice to any aspiring Zerg players or. You know, I don't know, sending a message to any of the players you're going to be facing in the tournament. Whatever you want. <laughs> any message to send? No, I don't think I have a message to send any players. <laughs> but, uh, you're too nice, man. You're too nice. I don't know. I, I will be... <laughs> this is like a running joke among my stream now, but I will be streaming more often <laughs> in the past the next couple of weeks. Uh, I try to do my best to talk about what I'm thinking if I find it important. I try not to like drabble on and on about like oh, 17 drone, 18 overlord, all that kind of crap because just watch the replay and you'll, you'll figure <laughs> it out yourself. It's really that simple. But uh, stop by my stream, uh, twitch.tv slash Krios11. God, I'm so sick at shout outs. Uh, I'll, I'll do my best to talk about it, um, especially in between games if I'm, I answer like 100% of the things people ask unless it's trolly. So, uh, yeah, uh, if you want to, if, to the aspiring Zerg comment, if you want to learn a bit about Zerg and see how I play and how I control things, come by my stream. Be happy to talk about it. I'll be streaming more often for the next few weeks at least. Sounds good, man. And uh, do you have a Twitter that people can follow you at? Nope. Oh, <laughs> uh, what? I know. My team, I, I oh, technically man. have a Twitter. Uh, it was made in like 2010 because uh, Idra was streaming occasionally and he was God Tier Zerg back then. So I made a Twitter <laughs> just to follow Idra. Oh, uh, man. It's, I think it's uh, at Krios. Uh, <laughs> maybe at Krios11. I'm not, I'm not sure. It's one of those things. <laughs> I oh, should man. probably start using it more often than I do, but. My my limited amount of free time I'd rather be spending playing StarCraft than Same Facebooking things. and tweeting. <laughs> All right, well I am still going to try and find it and link it regardless over in the Twitch chat on twitch.tv slash feardragon64 if you want to go ahead and follow. Obviously you want to go ahead and follow him on Twitch at least so you can get some information about when he's going to be streaming. Uh, and if you're watching this on youtube.com slash feardragon64 where all the VODs are conveniently made available the same day that they were actually broadcasted. You can find all the links just down below the video, so go ahead and check those out. My name has been Fear Dragon. Still is. Um, almost pulled a Toto Biscuit there. <laughs> Which always annoyed me about his videos. He's always just like, my name has been Total Biscuit. I'm like, it's, it's not anymore. He's British, it's alright. He can get away with it, I can't. And um, just huge shout out to you though, by the way. This is awesome. Oh, thank uh, you. This has been a huge amount of uh, motivation even uh, recently, so huge shout out to Fear Dragon, you're awesome, we need more people like you, it's uh, hashtag saving esports here, so thank you, <laughs> sir. Hey man, I was trying to get you to cry, you're not allowed to make me cry. <laughs> uh, but guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you did enjoy the episode, please consider following the channel so you'll actually get notifications about tomorrow and day after tomorrow's episode, where we will actually be jumping straight into Kratos' games, it's not just him talking about, you know, Protoss... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> kidding. We're just not just talking about his uh, playstyle. You actually get to witness it for yourself and see the kind of playstyle that's been able to take down players such as Hendrilisk, who is very well possibly going to have to play later on in the tournament, as well as other players like QXZ, etc., and a lot of the seed players. Um, and, of course, also tune in for Saturday's episode. Again, these are all broadcasted on Twitch.tv slash FearDragon64 at... 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. I'm really good at memorizing my own show time. Did you just clap for me? <laughs> oh my god. That was like the most humiliating thing you could have done. <laughs> Guys, definitely, uh, if, if you can't, if you suck at remembering times like I do, just follow the channel. And of course, 
go ahead and subscribe to me over on YouTube in case you do miss it out on it. I know that everyone is pretty busy these days. It happens on Thursday, Friday, then Saturday. Sometimes you want to go out drinking on Friday or, I don't know, you have class and you have to wake up in the morning on Friday, so you have to go to sleep early on Thursday, so you can't make it. You can check out all those videos, but huge shout out also to uh, Minnie Mouse, who actually has created all of these lovely overlay stuff over here that you can see. As well as that sick, those two sick logos, the Fear Dragon logo and the Breaking Out logo. They're like so amazing. Thank you so much to Minnie Mouse for designing that. As well as Cybert for actually that intro video that you watched like an hour and a half ago, I think. <laughs> if you still remember it, if you don't, literally go to any YouTube video that I have for Breaking Out and it's just there at the beginning. Cybert's like an amazing guy and I'm really looking forward to uh, some of the stuff that he has planned for the actual Invitational. It's going to be so sick. Um... But yeah, that's actually pretty much it. So guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. It's been an absolute pleasure, especially to have you on, Kratos. Thank looking, you very much. Looking forward glad, to seeing everyone to tomorrow. Yeah, looking forward to seeing everyone else tomorrow. Take care, guys. Have a wonderful Thursday.